Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews, and this is Refuge from Narcissism. And this refugee video is sponsored by contribution from John. And here's his story. Dear Ollie, I'm writing you this story question because I have been trying to figure out what my main underlying psychological problem is, and I think I have figured it out and would like to get your take on it. <clears throat> I think the main problem of mine is the concern about what other people think about me. Uh -huh. Of course it is. You were raised, and those those you don't know, John was, was raised by boomers. Um, Boomer academic father who um, never worked a day in his life, but is a professional academic, not actually teaching, studying, but not actually completing anything. <clears throat> Mother is typical borderline trying to turn John into a son husband at 29 years old. And as we have learned with most narcissists, especially boomers, it matters not what you think about them. It matters not what they think about themselves even. What matters most to the narcissist and specifically to the baby boomer is what other people think about them, other people's opinions. This is what drives them. They would rather the praise from a complete stranger, stranger than the love of their own child. <clears throat> this is why you never take your own accomplishments seriously. If you've done it, it must not be worth doing. If I've accomplished this, this must not have been that hard. This is the mentality of being raised by boomers because we know everything the baby boomer does touches seen heard played listened to is the greatest thing that has ever existed on the face of the planet just ask them but what really drives the boomer is the love and the admiration of other people seeking the complete and total praise from complete strangers. This is why you never take any of your own accomplishments seriously. Because accepting any praise from anybody you know, okay, is meaningless. Because that's how you've been trained. And especially being able to take yourself seriously. Listen, you can't take any of your accomplishments seriously unless some fucking stranger tells you how great it is. Why? Because that's how your parents have been operating. That's how you've been raised. People who have not been raised by narcs do not have the same crazy anxiety with this topic because they have not had the fear of anxiety drilled into them when they were young. From a very young age, I can remember my father telling me, your reputation is the most important thing in life. What I think he was trying to tell me was, his reputation is the most important thing in life. No, no, what he was telling you is, and partially, yeah, his reputation, but what he's telling you is, okay, other people's opinions is what really matters. And that's a sick way to go, go, go through life. And not that keeping a good reputation isn't important. Of course it is. Of course it is. Is it the most important thing in life? I don't think so. I mean, it's an important thing. Is it the most important thing? But that's all that drives the boomer. That's what drives the narcissist is other people's opinion of them they could care less what you think of them could care less it's meaningless and what reputation really means is what other people think about him is the most important thing in life yes 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 that's what i just explained to you yes what other people think, not your opinion, other people's opinions. 
I can remember when he told me, always remember when you're in public, people will think something about us, him, when you interact with them. He used to be thrilled about the compliments he got about my good manners and got crazy angry when I misbehaved. It took me a long time to realize that he wasn't actually concerned about my behavior, about, but about what other people think about him, and there is a big difference between the two. The meltdowns he would get when I embarrassed him through my behavior still after all these years remain as a haunting memory in my head. Right. They love embarrassing you in front of other people. They love to assert their dominance over you. And <clears throat> see, they think, and the problem is they think everyone thinks the same way they think. Where a kid's just not allowed, you know, first, you're not allowed to be a kid around a narcissist. You're definitely not allowed to be a kid around a boomer. And you're really not allowed to be a kid around a boomer fucking academic who's actually a child himself. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The big problem I have with all of this is that his fear has to be a certain degree, has has to, well, I'm sorry, the big problem I have with all of this is that his fear has to a certain degree become my fear. I sometimes question if I myself have become a covert narc because of it. I try everything I can not to care but so many times I catch myself going down the same familiar anxiety, anxiety uh, neural pathways when my person or reputation is attacked from outside sources. Again, again, this is right. Because you care too much. You care too much what other people think because that's how you've been trained. You can't take yourself seriously unless somebody else tells you it's good. Someone else told you it's a good job. And you know what? You still have difficulty believing it. Because you were raised by boomers. I think this is because when you were a kid, everything is about survival. Your parents truly do have power over you when you are a child because you cannot stand on your own two feet. And when you're an adult, that fear and anxiety are ingrained in your psyche. When going through your videos, I have noticed how your parents always use public opinion against you. It's never what you did to them, but more about what a failure you are in the eyes of society, what they would define as failure. Right, right. They understand, okay? They understand that they're, that, that's, that's a great point because they understand their shame is meaningless. Even in their mind, their shame, if they believe that their shame was something which something to be taken seriously, they wouldn't tell you what everybody else thought. But that's what their whole arguments are always generated around. Everybody else's outside opinion. Because they know what they have done to you. They know they have destroyed you. They know they're evil. They know that their fucking word really is pretty meaningless. Which is why they got to incorporate all their flying monkeys and the gang stalking and the gaslighting and everybody, everybody. It's bullshit. I have noticed how your parents always use public opinion against you. It's never what you did to them, but what more about more about what a failure you are in the eyes of society, what they would define as a failure. It's always about your payments to your ex-wife. You're not having a job. You're being a grifter, etc. Pretty much, because they don't understand this. They can't understand this. This look. This channel damages them not only because it exposed them, okay, but it's because people actually are paying for my opinion, what's in my mind, my thoughts, and it, they like, can't have it. They can't have it. 
They can't have it. They have to be. I have to be all of those things in their mind, even though they're lies, <laughs> even though they're lies, all of those things. Okay. Because he can't accept it. He could care less if I was sitting on YouTube telling all his stories and nobody was watching it. The fact that there's nearly 30,000 people subscribed to my channel, okay, and my videos get over usually a over a thousand views easy, hundreds of comments, that's what drives them insane, drives them insane. The opinions of other people. He can't make the connection. They can't make the connection that this channel is about validation for people telling the same stories. Okay? He can't make... All he sees it as, oh my God, I'm getting validation that, he can, he, that, that I should not be able to have. All these lies they throw at you in the hope of beating you down with these accusations because they assume you are like them and care more about your reputation than the personal relationship they have with you. It's fascinating how important the outer appearance is to the narc. So my big question is, how do we rid ourselves from this need to look good in, their, in the eyes of others? I, as, I have always thought you need to make a lot of money and then the fear will go away. But now I have made a lot of money and realize nothing has changed. So my next move would be to slowly train myself to not caring by not trying to look good and just let people think what they want. They think and okay, it's not easy, but the only way I can think of to break, it's not easy, but it's the only way I can think of to break this cycle of fear. Maybe you could share with us how you personally deal with all the negative smear campaign that has been launched against you and the tools you, the tools you have used not to give up on being yourself versus the image that society wants you to be. Love your channel. Greetings, John. The easiest thing I do, John, is I really don't look at a lot of it. I don't. Like, I know there's what's going on I know there's there, there's channels and I know there's Reddit threads and I know there's all that stuff that these people would like to like to believe that I spend all this time watching. I don't. I don't watch it. I don't read it. I only usually see it when other people send me send me clips of it. Like I've seen the Reddit and I look like two, three kinds like I know who they are and I start laughing. Because I know what Reddit is. Understand. I know what Reddit is. I had been on Reddit in in the lead up to the 2016 elections. So I understand it. So I really don't take Reddit all that seriously. The stuff I would take seriously were the stuff that ended up directly on my channel, in the comments section, people who I had dealt with on the channel that I felt needed to be directly addressed, you know, lies that had happened on the channel um so my first piece of advice is don't look at it it doesn't matter because people are going to say what they say about you regardless obsessing over it gets you nowhere gets you nowhere where well, you're gonna go out you gotta fight every bullshit accusation you can't you waste all your time doing it and that's not to say I haven't been caught up in, in, in a couple that I got dr dragged in further than I should have. Because I have. And it's, and, and, and it's hard. It's hard not to defend your reputation. It is. It's a hard thing to do. Because a reputation is important. But most of us have been shit on our whole lives. Our reputations have been trashed for decades already. And you, we talked about this, and I, 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 I had Skyped with John before, so I know a little bit more of his backstory. Okay, you're in a position where the only reason you're in, in, in the spot you are in right now is because of you. You could pick up and go at 
anytime you want. There is absolutely zero stopping you. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. You are, <clears throat> uh, and I told you this, you are f in a far greater position than about 90 to 95% of the people who write in. Um, they're, you know, they're not in a position where they could just pick up and 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 change and, and move anytime they want at at any time. So the first, you know, the, like I said, the first thing is stop looking at it. The second thing is you have to realize these people are going to do what and say what they're going to say, whether you're there or not. So either you are going to start living your life because you are almost 30 years old at this point, okay? Bordering on bordering on son husbandry with two boomers, okay? Questioning everything everything you've done in your life, yet you have gotten to yourself to a position on your own where you can where you are completely financially stable. Not only are you financially stable, you're at a point now where your father is actually taking money, stole money from you. I'm not going to say how much, but it was quite a significant amount. I mean, the thing is, you got to look at the entitlement of these people you have been dealing with as well. There's a lot of factors. Like, do you want to keep having to put up with all these entitlements of your parents, of having to be there all the time, of you stressing yourself out all the time? Worry about looking good in your own eyes. Because when you're trying to look good in the eyes of others, you're living the narcissist. You're, you're living the narcissistic boomer's life. That's how they live. So, my advice to you is: stop listening to it. Stop listening to it and look at your success. Just look at your success. Okay, because you're in a position where the results of your success can't even convince you that you're a success. That's nuts. That's crazy. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and story, John. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you like to expose, you like to set up a Skype phone call, have a private video made, or you just like to or you just like to make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you as I am completely demonetized from YouTube. So if you like what you see and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel here and on Rumble. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Refuge from Narcissism. Take care.